A year after arriving in Boston, the genius of Larry Bird's play had inspired the Celtics to go from worst to first. From day one training camp, you know, the, the enthusiasm, the attitude, you know, it was like a, a playoff atmosphere in training camp. That atmosphere carried over into the NBA Finals where Bird and the Celtics met the Houston Rockets. The key to Larry's play was his anticipation. Henderson broke it up. There's Bird again. Larry Bird with a steal. Henderson back to Bird. Beautiful. Look at this crowd. And while he couldn't jump this high, and while he couldn't run faster at his peak, then I can walk today, and I'm 51 years old, at Larry Bird was the quickest guy I ever saw because he outthought everybody. That quickness was at the heart of the most famous play of the entire series. Larry Bird follows his own shot. Oh, what a point. As soon as he shot that ball, knew he missed. Plays like this led the Celtics to the championship and helped turn the hick from French Lick into Larry Legend. At 42 on the Spike 52 countdown is some round ball royalty, Sir Charles. Charles Barkley is one of the most popular players in NBA history. He was a six-time All-Star in Philadelphia, where he became one of the league's top power forwards. He left the Sixers for Phoenix in search of an elusive championship. And in 1993, Barkley led the Suns to their best record ever, 62-20, and 20, as he won the league's MVP award. In the playoffs, he was unstoppable, averaging over 26 points and 13 rebounds a game. In Game 6 of their second round series with the Spurs, Charles battled with David Robinson. Big, important foul. With the score tied at 100, Sir Charles was ready to go. Robinson on Barkley. It's his game to win. Will we go to overtime? 20-footer, yes, with 1.8 seconds. Charles Barkley with an MVP jump shot. I got the shot I wanted. I wanted to drive it in and shoot basically a free throw. And it went in. Charles will graphically display this here. Charles, 28 points, 21 rebounds, 4 assists, 4 steals. And a shot. Western Conference final, baby. Absolutely add the Western Conference Championship for the Phoenix Sun. Number 41 in the Spike 52 countdown is Game 6 of the 1977 Finals. That season marked the NBA debut of Julius Irving. We played against Dr. J, who was without question the single most dynamic, vibrant, and exciting guy ever. Irving led the Sixers to the finals where they met the Portland Trailblazers. Portland, coming off its first ever season above 500, hit their stride during the playoffs. Uh, we ran into a team that I think pretty much was just a team of destiny. And I think our team was definitely more talented than theirs, but I think they were definitely better prepared and probably a little more dedicated to, to getting it done and had maybe more of a sense of urgency. After Philadelphia won the first two games of the series, the Blazers caught fire, fueled in great part by their unbelievable fans, the Blazer Maniacs. And they have come to their feet in Portland with their Blazers trailing two games to none. The Blazer Maniacs, the fans who never would let us stop. They drove us. They pushed us. They loved us. Walton on the line. Delighted of those fans, in Game 6, the Blazers were playing for the title. Here's McGinnis, Lucas comes out, McGinnis for the tie, it's off, McGinnis back, it's over, it's over, Portland has the championship, 109 to 107, they've gone wild in Portland. My whole life growing up, all I wanted to do was be a part of something special. And that dream never came true more than with the Portland Trail Blazers. The 77 title is only ranked 41st on this list? What is going on here? Why am I even hosting this show? What about the incredible coaching of Dr. Jack Ramsey? The remarkable leadership of the greatest teammate that I ever played with, Mr. Maurice Lucas. 41st, this cannot stand. I'm calling David Stern right now. We'll be right back. Does anybody have David Stern's home phone number, please? When Spike 52... Game 
Game 6 of the 1958 NBA Finals is number 40 on our countdown. In 1957, the Boston Celtics beat the St. Louis Hawks in the NBA Championship, winning the title with a thrilling Game 7 double overtime victory. A year later, the Hawks came looking for revenge, leading the way with Bob Pettit. Bob was perhaps one of the, the greatest power players who could shoot also outside. He was 6'9", very fluid, had a tremendous jump shot. Pettit, who won two NBA scoring titles in his Hall of Fame career, was unstoppable. Pettit plays his greatest game, scoring 21 points in the first half. It was a highlight of my career. I think probably you know, the greatest game I ever played. It just happened to be in the sixth game of the championship, and, and, I, and I did score 19 out of the last 21, and, uh, you know, and, and I just, just, you know, you just get it going sometimes, and it was my night. Time runs out, and the championship goes to the Hawks, 110 to 109. Who's the man of the hour? Bob Pettit. The new scoring record for a regulation time playoff game, 50 points. Broadway has seen its share of revivals, but few have been as successful as the one at number 39 on the Spike 52 countdown. Michael Jordan's return to Madison Square Garden on March 29, 1995. This uh, game number five of the uh, Michael Jordan reunion tour. Uh, you know that uh, Michael just loves to play here at Madison Square Garden, and the crowd will be sky high for his New York return. Nearly two years after retiring from basketball to pursue a career as a professional baseball player, Michael Jordan announced his return to the NBA with a simple two-word statement, I'm back. But he made his real statement in the fifth game of his return. Tony Kukoc has picked it up the last couple of games for Michael Jordan, who fires, yes, Michael Jordan hitting on his first field goal attempt. Jordan poured in 55 points against the Knicks. He came out and had a remarkable game, just uh, certifying his greatness once again, where he scored 55 points in, in dramatic style and leading his team to victory, and once again showing the basketball world that there's nobody like Michael Jordan. It was a remarkable performance. The 38th spot on the countdown goes to a player known to everyone as Mr. Clutch, Jerry West. Here's Jerry West stopping guys, jumping over guys, and of course then you talk about his jump shot and his ability to get around people. He was a great player. Uh, in some ways, I think that he, he's not really fully recognized as, as the great player that he was. In 1972, Jerry West was playing in the NBA All-Star Game in front of his home crowd in Los Angeles. Jerry West on a drive. With the clock winding down, and the score tied at 110, we found out why everyone called him Mr. Clutch. Six, five, four, three, two, two. It's over! <laughs> you can see that coming. You know he's going to get the two. Number 37 on the Spike 52 countdown is a comeback for the ages. On November 18, 1972, the New York Knicks were down by 18 with just under six minutes to go. Here's the crowd urging New York on. And standing defense. The Knicks defense was stifling, shutting down Buck stars Oscar Robertson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Robertson. Jabbar. The pusher. Reed hustles down court. He was really quick. Here's Monroe shooting. Crowd is going wild here. They sense that the Knicks may be able to do it. Monroe. Listen to this crowd now. Frazier. Fake. Monroe. The pusher. They'll bring the house down in a minute, Bob. At this stage, the Knicks, who had trailed by 20, have come up with 17 points in a row against the Milwaukee Bucks. They trail by one with 47 seconds to go. Frazier feeds Monroe. Earl shoots. Hit! The Knicks take the lead, 87-86. We have 30 seconds left to go. 
Jabbar. Pulled out by the pusher. Monroe with the ball. We have 24 seconds to go. Two seconds to go. Allen throws it to Jabbar. Jabbar turns and shoots. The Knicks win. The Knicks win. What a ball game. The Knicks win in 87 86. Fred on the Madison Square Garden. 19 points in a row. One of the most fantastic victories of all time. The Knicks remarkably held the Bucks scoreless for the last five minutes and 50 seconds and scored the final 19 points of the game. Coming up on Spike 52, greatest moments in NBA history, little Spud Webb shows why he's a true giant. Throw it down, Spud! Mark Countdown. Spike TV would like to apologize to the city of Portland, Oregon. During this episode, we have shown your beloved trailblazers destroyed by Michael Jordan. There's Jordan for three! Yes! Did you see that one? Then we showed them beaten at the buzzer by Larry Bird. Again to make the inbound pass to double team and Bird. Larry, fake, fall away. Hits it at the buzzer! Unbelievable! And finally, we showed them getting their hearts broken by Sean Elliott. Into Sean Elliott. He fires the three. Oh, God! San Antonio takes the lead. To make up for this and to appease the complaints of our host, we will now replay the final seconds of the 1977 NBA Finals. Here's McGinnis. Lucas comes out. McGinnis for the tie. It's off. Oh, and now, back to the countdown of the 52 greatest moments in NBA history. After the Lakers won the 1987 championship, Coach Pat Riley stunned everyone, especially his own players with his bold prediction for the next season. And I'm guaranteeing everybody here, next year we're going to win it again. To make Riley's prediction come true, the Lakers had to battle one of the toughest players in NBA history. Isaiah Thomas was the heart and soul of the Pistons during the late 1980s. And in the 1988 playoffs, he averaged nearly 22 points and nine assists a game. Isaiah Thomas is hurt down on the court underneath the basket. I couldn't tell what happened. Yeah, but he's limping noticeably right now. Despite playing on a severely injured ankle, Isaiah was literally unstoppable. The Pistons pushed the Lakers to the limit, but Los Angeles won game six and seven, showing that in addition to being a great coach, Pat Riley was also something of a prophet. Would you like to step up here and guarantee a third straight to start this off, coach? <laughs> The next spot on the Spike 52 countdown goes to the 1986 Slam Dunk Contest in Dallas. Many fans expected the title to go to defending champion Dominique Wilkins of the Atlanta Hawks. But it was Dominique's Atlanta Hawks teammate who stole the show. At barely 5'7", Spud Whip had already beaten the odds by making it in the NBA. Now he was trying to win a contest reserved for the most acrobatic of high flyers. The final round pitted Webb against his teammate, Dominique. Spud was more than ready for the challenge. Webb won the title, surprising everyone. Everyone, that is, except himself. No, I'm not surprised, but that's something I've been doing for the last four years, and I knew I could do it. It just did everybody hadn't seen me dunk like uh, they seen Dominic dunk. Number 34 on the Spike 52 countdown is Game 6 of the 1993 NBA Finals. And the stars 
not giving up. The Chicago Bulls were looking for their third straight NBA title. Standing in their way was Charles Barkley and the Phoenix Suns. Incredible. The Bulls can't find the basket. It looked like the Suns had forced a seventh and deciding game on their home court with a late rally in game six. Venus with a chance to take the lead. They get the Marley for a three. Got it. And the Suns play for the first time. The Bulls playing scared almost like they don't believe that they can win. Maybe the Suns are a team of destiny. We will find a way to win this game. With a three-peat on the line, the Bulls set up a final play. Hey, back to Michael. They want Michael to get a full head of steam, try to keep him in the middle of the floor. Michael, 11 seconds. Across the timeline, he comes, goes to Pippen. Pippen breaks inside. And Pippen got the shot. They go to Grant. The Paxson. Paxson going for the win. Here's Paxson for three. Paxson. Yes! Yeah! Yeah! Hit the three. Yes! The Bulls take a one-point lead. And this Paxson. round is done. And it's all over. The for the third year, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls have climbed the Mount Olympus of the NBA to the world champions of basketball. The Spike 52 countdown will continue with Michael Jordan battling the Utah Jazz. by Jordan. What a play. The flu. Michael still doesn't feel very well. The Bulls need other guys to step in and step up. And a 103 degree temperature. moment in NBA history. Well, I have to say, Joy lighting up Portland in the 1992 Finals. Were you even born then? Yeah, what do you think is the greatest? The 1974 NBA Finals, Boston and Milwaukee. You know what, Bill? My grandfather said the same thing. Spike is counting down the 52 greatest moments in NBA history. Relive the moments that made legends. Spike 52, greatest moments in NBA history. Continues on Spike TV. The NBA Finals begin June 6th. The 33rd spot on our Spike 52 countdown goes to a player who wore number 33, Larry Bird, and the 1988 three-point contest. The contest featured some of the NBA's premier shooters, Byron Scott of the Lakers, Boston's Danny Ainge, and Dale Ellis of the Seattle Supersonics. But the odds-on favorite was Larry Bird. It was the third year of the contest, and Larry Legend was going for his third straight title. Final round pitted Bird against Dale Ellis. Bird struggled early on, and it looked like his streak might end. To win it all, he had to sink his final three shots. Quickly, 14. This is a tie for the money. Yo! Came to three-point shooting, there's no question who was number one. George Mikan leads the way at number 32 on the Spike 52 countdown. Mikan was so much more than just a big man. He was pro basketball's first real superstar. It's the Lakers ball, and we see the incomparable George Mikan winning the battle for the rebound. He was the dominant figure. No one came close. 6'10", strong guy, uh, had his spectacles on all the time. A very tough player in terms of presence. Uh, he, he, he was unmerciful to his opponents. And what I remember about George Mikan was seeing his name on the marquee at the old Madison Square Garden on 49th Street and 8th Avenue. Tonight, George Mikan and the Lakers, which was kind of unusual, just showing you the status that he enjoyed as an individual. It was very, very uh, unusual to see a man's name on a marquee that wasn't really that big. With number 99 in the post, the Minneapolis Lakers became the NBA's first dynasty. Brian shot underneath the Smith, but the fight for the rebound is won by Mikan. The title was Minneapolis's fifth in six years. Next 
on our countdown is Game 5 of the 1997 NBA Finals. The series pitted league MVP Carl Malone against Michael Jordan and the defending champion Chicago Bulls. At the end of the first game, Malone had a chance to give the Jazz a lead. And this is, you've got to get this rebound, Malone. Oh, he missed the break. Rebounded by Jordan. And the ball had the time. Jordan came back and made him pay. Two coaches got the ball inbounds from Pippen, and here is Michael. Four on the shot clock now. Keeps it on the dribble. Russell's there. MJ, top of the circle against Russell. Michael hangs, fires, scores! Bulls won game two and looked to be running away with the championship. But when the teams returned to Utah, the Jazz hung tough and knotted the series at two games apiece. Jordan, right side, Michael, up top, 20 footer, no good, rebound, Stockton, ahead to Carvalho, he's got it, Stockton to the middle, he scores, Jazz take the lead, incredible, the Jazz take the lead. The Jazz were confident going into Game 5, especially when they learned that Jordan was not 100%. The bad news for the Bulls, the stomach virus that has hit Michael Jordan, and they wonder just how much, how long, and how hard he'll be able to go. With Jordan battling a 103-degree temperature, the Jazz were primed to take command of the series. Michael still doesn't feel very well. The Bulls need other guys to step in and step up. Jordan fought through his sickness and scored an amazing 38 points in the game. To the free throw line. Hangs in the air. Jumper good. Oh, shot. Oh, by Jordan. What a play by Michael Jordan. Jordan put in the game winner with just 25 seconds to go. Stuck a dagger at him with a three. Yes. That he gave us today was unbelievable, you know, and his teammates, we really appreciate the way that he steps up and shows his leadership for our ball club. And two days later, the Bulls went on to win their fifth NBA championship. Michael Jordan, what an unbelievable competitor. Incredible. Mello, we've now seen 22 of the greatest moments in NBA history. Do you see what I mean about it helping you to understand the meaning of Western civilization? Riley motivating the Lakers the same way John Kennedy motivated Americans to go to the moon. Spud Webb using his rugged individualism to compete with men much larger than himself. Teams made up of players of different races and nationalities coming together in a harmonic convergence of athletic excellence. Are we watching the same show? Of course we are, Mello. It will make sense to you one day. By the way, I agree with you. I think you guys got ripped off being ranked 41st. You do? Would you mind calling David Stern for me? He stopped taking my calls. No problem. He's on my speed dial. Make sure to join us next time when we continue our countdown of the greatest moments in NBA history. And Mello, make sure you mention Jack Ramsey and Maurice Lucas. Gotcha. Next time, Spike 52 Greatest Moments in NBA History continues with some of the greatest names the game has ever seen. And a steal. Miller retreats to the three-point line and hits again. Here's Michael at the foul line. It's 89-84. Sixers and they get inside. Slow, try it again. Close, but not quite. Come on. No way. We're trying to get a shot off in less than four tenths of a second. Because four tenths of a second is all it takes to save a season. Don't believe us, just watch this. Number 30 on the Spike 52 greatest moments in NBA history is Game 5, the 2004 Western Conference semifinals between the Los Angeles Lakers and the defending world champion San Antonio Spurs. With 12 seconds left to play, a good game became a great one. It started with Kobe Bryant. He sets it. Kobe gets around it. Kobe puts it up. Made it. Lakers by one with 11 and a half to go. Kobe Bryant is tired. Oh, he's it's exhausted. An unbelievable shot. But he walked off the floor like he wanted to pass out. In response to Bryant, the Spurs worked the ball to Duncan for the final shot. To Duncan. He gets doubled. Shaq all over him. He gets away, a fadeaway. He makes it with four tenths left. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. He's pressured. Wow. He makes it from way outside. You could 
get the fit of that any better. No. You know, it's almost like Tim Duncan is giving the, the Lakers what Kobe has given the Spurs. San Antonio celebrated the win, but the clock still read four tenths of a second. Here they go. They get it to Fisher. He scores! Oh, Eric so Fisher scores at the buzzer. It'll have to be reviewed. The Lakers rushed from the court as the SBC Center crowd fell silent. The final two shots were amazing and led to this analysis from Lakers center Shaquille O'Neal. One lucky shot deserves another. <laughs> Tim Duncan had a great shot. He was falling down. He just threw it up. I thought I was playing good day. I was right there. I didn't want to foul. I was right there. Right there in the space and he hit the shot. And then Derek got the ball, threw up a lucky shot and hit the shot. We won the game. Number 29 in the Spike 52 countdown highlights one of the most lethal weapons in the history of sport, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar skyhook. There was only one player that I've ever played with or against that I feared, and that was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I didn't fear him in terms of having to compete against him. I feared every time he got the ball on the box, it was two points. I mean, this is how great a player and an offensive player this man was. In 1974, JoJo White had to face that fear as he and his Celtic teammates battled Kareem and the Milwaukee Bucks in one of the greatest finals in NBA history. And those two teams met in the 74 championship. Seven games, six, six of the games, the road team won, and it was so incredible. I'm in college, and I am just eating all this stuff up. That was spectacular basketball. The Celtics looked to have the series won in Game 6 when John Havlicek put in a jump shot with only 7 seconds to play in the second overtime giving Boston a 101-100 lead. With one play to go, all eyes were focused on the Bucks' young center. What a basketball game we've had. Oscar Robertson throws the three. 7 seconds. Michael, the oh. Kareem with a big pressure shot. The Celtics came back in Game 7 to win their 12th NBA championship. But Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had served notice, and Boston would have to contend with that skyhook in many more finals games to 